So hi everybody, uh, it's day 24, cheers, GNT today, um, and it's a lovely beautiful sunny day, I've done a lot of reading, and tonight I'm going to be cooking, <laughs> we'll all have to see how that one turns out, won't we? Um, yes, <laughs> please don't judge me, I am not trying to teach you all to cook, um, I am trying to entertain you <laughs> and it will probably all go horribly wrong who knows <laughs> um, if you've enjoyed it let me know obviously once you've seen it um, and if you want me to cook anything else let me know if you don't want me to ever walk into a kitchen ever again let me know and if you want to challenge me a bit like Annika used to get challenged if you want to challenge me then <laughs> I'll have a go at anything I am not looking forward to tonight. It's going to be a disaster. <laughs> See you later. Hi guys, this is just a little short introduction so that you can see the area that I'm going to be cooking in. Not very big, but plenty for me. I don't do that much cooking. This is more cooking than I've probably done in my whole lifetime. I have two electric hobs. I don't have an oven underneath fairly small prep area through in my hall you go past the fridge freezer and over there you can see my microwave it's an English microwave it came over with me um, it's a convention oven a microwave oven and a grill so there you go guys that's what I've got okay hi everyone so what I've done is I've done a little bit of prep before we start, because obviously you don't need to see me doing all of that. So I've boiled a couple of eggs and I've chopped my potatoes. I've now got a pan on the boil, which is going to take a while to boil my potatoes. Um, I found this poor little bit of courgette sitting in the kitchen, sitting in the kitchen, sitting in the fridge. So I thought I'm going to throw that in as well. So all I'm doing is quartering that little bit of cute, that little bit of courgette that I found. Main ingredient of this is an onion. <laughs> Seriously, I have not had that much to drink. Cheers. <laughs> the main ingredient of this, thank you to Agnes, I hope I pronounced it correctly this time, is leek. And she did tell me what the name of it was. It's Anglesey something. Um, obviously the leek. So I'm just slicing the leek. It's a blooming big one and I've probably got far more ingredients than just for me, which is normal. What I normally do is I overcook and then I freeze and then I have a meal or two or three, as in the case of my spaghetti bolognese, in the freezer that I can defrost for later when I don't feel like cooking. Now, this recipe was sent to me. So all I've got is a little pot here that I'm just putting everything into out of the way. Um, yeah, as I say, a lot. Um, what was I going to say now? Uh, yes, this recipe, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a quarter of an onion in as well. Probably don't need it with the leek, but I do like an onion and this one, really does need eating up so let's see what it's like when I cut it um, and all of this is just not quite sure how this is going to go <laughs> and obviously I have nothing scripted I am just burbling on in my usual way and let's see what happens I'm certainly not teaching you all to cook because I'd be the last person to do that there was a reason I'm just taking that, those little bits out of the onion there was a reason I married a chef. Um, but I'm, I'm not, still not married. I'm not married to him anymore. So I'm just going to take, as I said, a quarter of that. Let's put the rest of it in here. And I can vacuum that and put that back in the fridge. So I'm just going to slice this down and add it to the mix. And I'm also going to put in there, because me being me, I don't just put one little thing in. 
yeah these are vacuum packed containers absolutely brilliant i am going to put a quarter of pepper in there that's something else again that i've cooked and cooked i've chopped i swear this is my first gnt honest i better move it over there it's getting warm from the potato water um so all i'm doing is just slicing this up so basically if you want it all the same pepper then it's going to be a half but this is two quarters and we'll see if i think that's enough when i start frying it up now the recipe that i was given says about boiling the leek i don't boil anything what i like to do olive oil always buy your olive oil even if this is a new one <laughs> yeah it's olive oil it's not vinegar all right it definitely says yeah it's definitely olive oil um one of the things i have found out here is buy your olive oil in glass don't buy it in plastic because it really was gross the one i had in plastic which is why i've just bought a new one so let's put a little bit of that in the bottom of my pan and skin that around i'll be doing that in a minute or two at the moment i'm just letting it oh and that's doing quite nicely it's coming to the boil so what i've done with the potatoes yes you still can see me good what i've done with the potatoes i think the official term is i've diced them basically i've chopped them up as small as i can because they'll boil quicker so yeah my water's boiling so let's just add the potatoes and they're probably going to take 10 to 15 minutes i'm guessing i never know the times of anything i just sort of throw it all in and um, something else you do need that i have done prepared is grated cheese now i am going to do something that i have never ever ever done before let alone do it live <laughs> i am going to make a sauce from scratch i have no idea of the proportions i have absolutely no idea what i'm doing but hey isn't that the fun of it all so whilst i wait for the potatoes to come back to the boil and to get to a point where i'm ready to do the next bit i'm going to stop the video and come back to you when we're ready okay okay so my potatoes are bubbling quite nicely whilst i've you've been away i sliced up the eggs i don't think i've done a very good job of that we'll see what happens I think I need another drink, cheers. What I'm gonna do is I'm now going to fry all this little bit, the courgettes, the leeks, the onion, and the peppers, I'm gonna fry in a pan. Um, I prefer to fry in a pan than in a frying pan because A, you get that much more space, all that much more space, and it doesn't splatter about so much that so keeps your work surface a bit cleaner. I've got my little um, kitchen assistant has just joined me. Um, she knows there's food about and she's desperate for some. Right, so um, that olive oil that I put in, I'm just bringing that up to heat and then I'm just gonna throw all this lot in. I do a lot of throwing, <laughs> you'll see. Right, let's just shove this lot in. I'm just putting it all in at the same time. There we go. And then I'm just gonna mix that all up I am probably going to need to put some more oil in there. But at the moment, I'm just stirring it all around. I know you can't really see what I'm doing. Um, and I'm not going to keep moving the camera because it will fall over, I know. But basically, I'm just using a spoon just to turn everything around whilst that heats up. And as I say, I'm definitely going to need to put a little bit more olive oil in there. You can never have enough olive oil in there. I think you can probably hear my potatoes bubbling away in the background and you'll hear this start sizzling in a minute when it comes to heat so it looks quite a lot at the moment I think you can see in there but I know from experience not with this recipe 
but with other recipes, but these leeks will shrink. And onions do as well. Here we go, that's coming up nicely, that's starting to sizzle. So let's see how my potatoes are doing. Jab them with a fork. Yep, they're coming up quite nicely. So for those of you that are in England, you probably think this is a small kitchen. And um, for those of us in Spain, this is actually quite a decent sized kitchen. And to be honest, I don't know how the bars do it. Um, a lot of the bars over here turn out Sunday lunches, I don't know how many different tappers in a space that's as big or probably smaller than this. I don't know how they do it and hats off to them. Give them more credit for that. Sell them a g &T. I never have um, ice in my GNT, but what I do, and this is a lovely little tip that I had a few years ago from a friend of mine. Um, what he did was he actually took a lime and chopped a lime up and put it in the freezer. And then when he wants a GNT, he puts a frozen lime in instead of ice. It's lovely. I've done the same. I don't have lime in the fridge at the moment, but that's lemon that I've chopped up and frozen, and I've got the same with orange. Very nice. Takes the edge off a cheap gin. I also do like a bit of cucumber, but that doesn't, that doesn't freeze very well. Ask me how I know. Right, so this is all sizzling quite nicely. The leeks are breaking up quite nicely. I know looking at the portions here that I have definitely got more than I need. I'm going to cook in this, not obviously with the Tupperware top on, but this is my lasagna dish. I'm going to put it all in here Anything that's left will go in a different one and will get frozen. I know that that then has to be, the top has to be done. You'll see what I mean. It'll all make sense at the end. And as I say, do please remember this is not a recipe I've done before. Um, and I am just going from what I've been told. The funniest bit is going to be me trying to make a sauce. Never done it in my life. I understand the mechanics, and I probably need a bit of this as well, a nice bit of butter. Um, I understand the mechanics of how it works, but not quite how it, reacts, how it relates to me, if you see what I mean. I will also need that at some point. Thank you very much, Lucy. One thing I couldn't get over here was a decent masher. You get all these nice ones, but if they're plastic here, I tell you, they're good as useless. You want a nice, good metal one. Oh, listen at me with the kitchen tips. Oh, my word, who do I think I am? Delia Smith or what? And for those that don't know, the reference to Delia Smith is that I originally come from Norwich and uh, Delia Smith is on the board of the Norwich City Football Club. She's the one that um, once taught you how to boil an egg. As you remember, I didn't do that. So that's all sizzling quite nicely. I must say, it's looking, looking rather good and smelling rather good as well. And it's coming on nicely. Now, one thing about... Oh, yes, they come on nicely. One thing about mashed potato that I particularly like, and I'm going to turn those off because they'll just sit there quite happily for a little while. Um, I do much prefer a gas oven, um, a gas hob, where you turn it off and the heat goes. With an electric, I mean, it's still bubbling and I've turned it off. You just have to get used to it. Um, now, I was going to... Oh, yes, I know what I was needing. Yeah, one, I was saying, one of the good things about mashed potato is you can't actually overdo the mash. Um, I, I quite like a lot of my veg crunchy. Um, that doesn't come to potatoes. As far as I'm concerned, you can never overdo a potato. The softer it is, the better. I'm going to put a wee drop more oil in there. I know you think I'm putting a lot in. But trust me, it's a tiny little dribble coming out. You can't see it. It's not a big pour. It's coming out through a dispenser. A bit like my um, vinegar carver, or carver vinegar, for those of you that have seen that particular episode. And for those that haven't, you can either look it up on Facebook. Uh, 28th of March it will be on, on my Facebook page. Or you can look it up on YouTube. I now have a YouTube channel, get me. Um, that's been a lot of fun trying to set that up. Right, we'll just leave that now. 
Let's go for a sauce, shall we? What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take the potatoes off the back and I'm going to move, and I've just put that on the drainer and I've moved my leeks to the back so that I have the front free for my sauce. So remember, it doesn't matter if my potatoes get cold, because this is going to go into the oven. Right, so now we need that to heat up. As I say, this is going to be fun. Oh, I have no idea what I'm doing here. I'm winging it. <laughs> right, so we'll just wait for the milk to come to the boil. And I think I'll stop you for a couple of minutes, because you don't need to see me standing here waiting for milk boil. Okay, so my milk is coming to the boil. Um, whilst I was waiting for that, I've actually mashed the potatoes. You don't need to see me mash potatoes, do you? So now here comes the fun bit. The milk is coming to the boil. And I'm going to add to the boiling milk some corn flour. I have no idea how much I'm going to add. I'm just going to add it, mix it in, and see what happens. All right, so I've just turned that down a little. And I'm mixing this round. I'm hoping I'm not going to, whoops, hoping I'm not going to spill it everywhere. And I'm hoping I'm not going to get too many lumps. But oh my goodness, I'm spilling it everywhere. Let's add a little bit more, shall we? Right, I will probably. I knew this was going to be a disaster. I've already been trying to think of a title for this. And I'm going with Dickerson's Dietary Disasters. Unless, of course, you know better. Right, let's bring that down a bit more. I have no idea if that's thick enough, but I know what will thicken it up. I like some good old grated cheese. I always have grated cheese prepared in a pot. I'm going to mix that in as well. And we'll see what happens. There's probably somewhere, if I could be bothered to look, a measurement for all of this. But, who knows? I never have been one for reading the instruction manual at the best of times. Oh, it smells nice. It actually smells like a cheese sauce. I know I sound surprised, don't I? Right, um, I do have a lot of lumps in here. I probably should use a whisk, which I don't own. So I shall add that to the list of things I need to purchase. And also it's a non-stick pan, so I have to be careful with my spoon going in there. So what I'm doing is using my spatula, and I'm actually smacking all the lumps against the spoon against the spatula. Yeah, very lumpy. Not what I had in mind, but hey-ho. We can't all be chefs, can we? Right, now what I'm going to do is I've turned everything off. I am now going to mix that lovely fried mixture up with my mashed potato. So let me bring it over here so you can see what I'm doing, hopefully. I know it's very bad. I, I've only got a camera, um, my telephone camera to do this on. I don't have a proper camera. So there's only a certain amount that you can do. So you will have to bear with me. And one thing you won't be seeing is a picture of my kitchen by the time I finish because it's going to be an absolute disaster area. Right, so what I'm now doing is I'm folding, I believe is the cookery term. I'm folding the veg into the potato. She just looks really nice. <laughs> I'm not so sure about the sauce. Yeah, that is a complete unmitigated disaster, I have to be honest. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to rescue that. Never mind. Right. So next time somebody sends me in a recipe, can we not have a sauce in it, please? Or 
perhaps I'll go and Google how to do the sauces. Right, so that's all mixed in. So what I'm going to do now, oh dear, that's really, really, really not good, you know. I mean, it smells, oh God, I've got it all over the cooker, that'll be cleaning. It smells like a cheese sauce. Doesn't look like one. Right, so let's sign your dish. And let's put all of this lot in. There we go. Another thing I've learnt with potatoes, mashed potatoes, put water in the pan immediately because it's not, it sticks and it's a bugger to get out, even in a non-stick pan. Okay. So now I'm going to push this into the edges. Oh, that looks, actually I have to say, it does look rather nice. It's a shame about the sauce. I'm not sure whether I'm going to put the sauce on or not. Um, I don't know. It's at this point where if this was live, no, I'm not going to put the sauce on, to be honest. We can say that's a complete unmitigated disaster. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to layer be a disaster that's what you get for doing things live isn't it so I'm layering the egg on top and I'm going to sprinkle some cheese on top of that and then I'm going to put that in the oven at 180 for a little while until it becomes lovely and brown on top I do think I will no I won't I might mess it up so I'm going to put that in the oven and I will see you when I come back and tell you what it looks like. Okay, so what I've done, I haven't actually put it in the oven yet. I had to think about the sauce and I've done it cold because this is going in the oven so it can heat up in the oven. I'm hoping this might turn out to be an even bigger disaster. But what I've done is I've taken the milk, I've mixed the flour in and it's not lumpy and I've got cheese in there. So I'm now going to put that on top and pray I haven't just ruined my tea. <laughs> if not, I think I might have something in the fridge that I can, the um, freezer that I can defrost. So I'm now going to put this in 180 until I think it's ready. Okay, so the disaster dish has been in for 20 minutes. It's bubbling. It's yeah, probably could be better. Um, bad for a first attempt, I think, she says. As they say, the proof is in the pudding, isn't it? Um, hold on. It's, I have to say, actually, <laughs> it smells gorgeous. Let's see what that tastes like. Mm. Oh, and if any of you are asking, the um, hob actually came up quite nice. Right, let's see. Well, I quite like the creamy sauce with it. Okay, here we go. Let me duck down. Actually, I'd cook that again. <laughs> Obviously, I need help with the sauce, <laughs> but it's edible. If I'm not online tomorrow, you know I've poisoned myself. Cheers. Mm. And a nice bit of GNT to wash it down. And remember, everyone, stay safe, stay strong, and stay sane. See you all tomorrow. Bye.